We're back. Welcome to Last Chance to Paint and the Precious Africa Expedition. Just take a look. Art can change our future. Travel with me, artist John Dyer and artist Joanne Short. Be inspired by endangered environments, plants and animals, and learn about tribal culture. Paint, connect, exhibit and change. It's a last chance to paint. I'm artist John Dyer, and I'm hoping to inspire you all to do your best paintings and to really connect to the natural world so that you and I can all be the change in our fight to help wildlife and climate change and make the world a better place. Hi, I'm artist Joanne Short and I'm here to do photography, blogs, writing and to tell you all about our adventures in Africa. We're just about to arrive in Nairobi, flames. We've been trying to sleep all night and now we're trying to, just looking out the window, waiting for us to descend down into Nairobi. It's really exciting. We're in Kenya, we're at the airport. This is Martin, who is going to drive us around Kenya. <laughs> so we're very excited. I'm Martin, I work for Bonfree. I'm driving the team and we are really having fun. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the Bonfree Land Rover and we're heading to the Bonfree office to say hi to the full team. Uh, Joe's in the back there and Martin is driving. And they've got lots of amazing artistic sculptures here, the wildebeest and zebra and hippos right outside the airport. So you get a real flavour of what we're going to expect or what we're going to see on this adventure. So apparently this is Nairobi National Park and any animals we see in there will be real, but we're on a motorway right around the edge. It looks incredibly dry. I'm going to ask Phoebe about how dry this is. <laughs> I just swung you up for the first time. <laughs> Welcome. We're at the Bournefree Foundation building and look, it's beautiful here. Flowers and this is Phoebe. <laughs> He's going to look after us for the week. So very excited to meet you. Nice it's to meet you. So too. nice to be here. Yes. Yeah. Looking forward to the next ten days. Ten days. <laughs> There's been a lot of there's been a drought in Kenya for such a long time. Those are Maasai cows. They've walked 300 kilometers from their homes to Nairobi town to look for pasture. But even here, when they come, there's no pasture because either they're going into somebody's lawn or someone's private land. So it's a big, big problem for them. And then you're finding that at night they have to lay down somewhere. It's, it's quite frustrating for them. The drought has been very, very devastating. It's not a common sight to see cows in the middle of Nairobi because the Maasai are looking for grass for their cows everywhere. It's not normal to see that being sold by the side of the road in normal times. So this is a, uh, a riverbed, so we're literally stood up to our middles in water, but there's no water. So there's been a two year drought in Kenya. Last time it rained was back in November and the water may be obstructed by farming up river, but when it does rain, there's gonna be a huge flash flood through here which is going to be really dangerous. But the water situation in Kenya is really devastating at the moment for the wildlife and for the farming community. <gasps> Martin's just, just pointed out the the there are zebras. Zebra. And they are, I don't know what they're eating, probably dried, they're eating dried grass. Uh, uh, um, so they're still finding food, but you can see how, just how arid and dry this landscape is after two years of drought. Um, the zebra probably wouldn't normally choose to be this close to the road. Yeah. So this is an un unusual behaviour for the zebra to feel they need to risk going this far um, towards people and cars. <laughs> this is incredibly bumpy road as we head towards Amboseli and uh, all around us is where wildlife would be but it's just so dry but the, the acacias are amazing, the acacia trees and we're going to take a look at the acacia trees uh, later on tomorrow. They, they seem to be um, 
the life source of, of the savannah here. It's lovely group, um, lovely group of natives with their craft. So we'll come and have a look at their craft. There's a camping craft. We've got this lovely parrot, and they make this lovely beadwork. Look these bracelets. And look at the necklaces. And look at their clothing. Martin likes the Land Rover, so who needs roads? <laughs> We're just going through a load of sand now. So the last time that the, the Born Free team were here, which wasn't even, it was last year probably, this was uh, part of Ambaseli Lake, and look how, how dry it is. So we've arrived at our first stop, which is a hotel in the middle of Amboseli. We've just had our lunch and now we're going out on an afternoon safari. So it's our first time going out really properly to look for some animals. We're, we've, they've taken the roof off so that look, we can stand up and look out. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be so fun. <laughs> no, that's fantastic, Martin. Yeah. So we see what we can see, shall we? John is, John's videoing a lion. He's, he's photographing a lion over there and over the other side there's another one coming out of the bush. It's quite unusual to see the lions. I'm really very lucky to be able to see them. It's really great to know we've got class four at the Grange Primary School following us. So do some great art and I look forward to seeing it on the World Gallery soon. And Boxgrove Primary School wants to know which of the big five is my favourite. Well, the rhino is my favourite. And why? Because I think the story of the two northern white rhino, the last ones on planet Earth, is a really important one. So that's really connected me. And we're going to go and visit them in a few days' time, and you can come too. There's a monkey at our window. Hello, monkey. <laughs> 